Okay, welcome back. This is Captain Amy Coppage again with the Chesapeake Marine Training Institute. And the next problem that we're going to do is course to steer with leeway. Now, these type of problems gives us several pieces of information and it's our job to kind of figure out uh, exactly what course we would need to steer in order to make the main course good and that's dealing with the environmental issues of current, known as set and drift, and the wind causing leeway. Now you can do these problems on a radar plotting sheet, a radar transfer plotting sheet, or a maneuvering board that you would find at the Coast Guard Exam Center, uh, or you can do it right here on the compass rose, which is what I'm going to demonstrate for those of you who don't have uh, the accessibility of a plotting sheet. So the first thing that we've got to determine is what information is given in the problem. First it tells us what our speed is. Our speed is 9.8 knots. And it tells us that uh, we have a northeast wind causing three degrees of leeway. So that's an estimated angle that we're being pushed off by the wind. And the current is 220 at 1.2 knots. That's our set and drift. It says, what is the course to steer inbound the York River entrance channel? So in this particular case, it wants to know what is the course we would steer to drive inbound the York River, but taking in consideration the wind and the current. Some problems will give you two points, uh, two various latitude and longitudes. Think of those as the same as you would as if there was a point right here at the beginning of the channel and a point here at the end of the channel, that would be your two points that you would line up. In this case, they're just using the York River channel. So what I like to do is just use this black dotted line that runs along the channel. You could line up the buoys, but the black dotted line gives us a really good idea of uh, the channel, and so we can just take that and use it uh, as is. Okay, so <clears throat> I'm going to line up the York River channel, and I'm just going to use um, the black dotted lines of the channel and I'm going to do this in marker so you guys can see it a little bit better. So the first thing we want to do is just line it up to make sure that we're getting uh, the accurate information. Okay, and get it nice and lined up like that. Just lining the edge up with this black dotted line and I'm going to transfer that down to the crosshair in the center of the compass rose. Okay. From the center of the compass rose, I'm going to draw out the course. So that's just the course of the channel. And what I've gotten is uh, 309. So I'm going to draw that out and we'll uh, use this side of it. Let's see if we can make that a little darker. Okay, there we go. So I'm drawing out the main course that we would steer. Okay, so that's 309. That's just the same as the channel there. Okay, now it tells us next that we have a current. So the second step after you've plotted the main course is to plot the current. It says the current is at 220. So 180, 190, 200, 210, 220. So I'm going to plot from the center because that's basically our position. 220, so from the center into the direction of 220. Okay, so I've got my line drawn there. <clears throat> so that's the current uh, set line. Now I need to draw in the drift. Okay, so we got 220 at 1.2. Now this is where it gets a little bit different uh, when you're when you're using the actual compass rose. <clears throat> it's better to do a little bit of math because otherwise you're going to have some really long lines here based on the speeds given in the problem. If you plot 9.8 and you plot 1.2, that's based on a one-hour plot. And that's typically fine when you have a plotting sheet because you can use a 2 to 1 or 3 to 1 scale. When you're doing it on the compass rows, it's better to do a half-hour plot, which means that these numbers are divided in half, and it makes it a little bit easier to plot on the compass rows. So if you're using the rows, go ahead and take your speed, and it's 9.8 and the speed of the current 
which is 1.2, and we're going to divide both of those in half. And the reason we're going to do that is to make the measurement a little bit smaller for our compass rows. So 9.8 divided by 2 gives us 4.9, and 1.2 divided by 2 gives us 0.6. Both of these are speeds in a half an hour. This is how far we would go in a half hour, and this is how far we would be pushed off in a half an hour. So those make it a little bit better for measurement purposes on our chart. So the first thing that we're going to do, once we've got our speeds broken down in half, we're going to plot our current drift line, which was 0.6. Okay, so we know the set was 220 our drift in a half hour is 0.6. So we're just going to go over here to the latitude scale and I'm going to measure 0.6 on the latitude scale. Okay, So I'm just measuring out 0.6 of a mile. Now I take that 0.6 onto my current line and I'm going to make a mark there. Okay, 0 0.6. So if I did nothing, I would be there in a half hour. The current's pushing me down at 0 0.6 knots, so I would be there in a half hour. Now, the next step is to plot your speed, what you would do in a half hour. So I'm going to use my compass, and I'm going to dial up 4.9 miles. Because 4.9 miles is how far I would go in a half hour. Okay, so I've got 4.9 on my latitude scale. Now here's the tricky part, you're no longer here in a half hour, you're down here. So what we're going to do is put our pointed end of our compass onto the line that we marked for our set and drift, and we're going to cross over our course line. Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and make that a little bit darker so you can see it really good. Okay, so I'll just mark that here. Okay, once you've got those two marks, what you're going to do is take your parallel ruler or your weems like I'm using and you're going to line up those two marks. So this is your set and drift mark in a half hour. This is your speed from that point in a half hour. Line them up and walk it up to the center. If you're using parallels, just walk it normal. Okay, and I'm going to mark that. And what I've got is 316. Okay. So if I was only compensating for the current in order to make 309 good, I would have to steer 316. But I have one more factor that I have to deal with, and that's the wind. And it says that the wind is northeast, causing 3 degrees of leeway. So when we think about wind, it's always where it's coming from. So here is north, here is east, here is south and here is west. The wind is coming from the northeast, okay? So the wind is pushing us down to something lower, lower numbers, and it says it's three degrees. So in order to compensate for that three degrees of leeway, what we're going to do is steer into the wind three degrees. So if I started at 316, I'm going to steer to the right three more degrees, 317, 318, 319. So what I would steer is 319 degrees true in order to make 309 with these particular circumstances, with a current of 220 at 1.2 and a northeast wind at 3 degrees. So. 319 is my final in true. When you look at your answers, make sure they are also in true. So I would choose A. If these numbers were PSC, then you would have to follow up with a TVMDC, putting your true of 319 here, and then converting down to compass to get your compass uh, heading. But in this particular case, we don't have to do that. But if you do, just take your true off the chart and run it down a TVMDC problem. So I could go ahead and do that um, and just, you know, get our compass course if we wanted to. Let's see if I can find my deviation table quickly. All right, so <clears throat> variation is 9 west, 
Remember, always put in your arrows, plus west, minus east. Okay. So, using my calculator, 319 plus 9 is 328. Go to my deviation table with 328, which is really close to 330, which is 1.5 east. Going down still, I'm going to subtract east, so minus 1.5 is 3.26 decimal 5 degrees per standard compass. So if our answers here were in PSC, or per standard compass, I would choose 3.26.5, but because this problem asks for true, I'm going to leave it right there at true. The only difference with some of these other problems is sometimes they won't give you a channel to follow, they'll give you two points. The same idea plays in there. You plot the two points, line them up, draw out your main course, plot your current, your set, and your drift away from it. From your set and drift mark, mark off your speed, line up the two points, walk it to the center, that gives you your course for the current, and then apply the wind. And remember, wind is always where it's coming from. In our case, it was the northeast. So it's pushing us down, so we need to steer into the wind three more degrees, which made it 319 true. Go practice some problems on your own.